You know, Claire, any moment over the last eight years where there's some little piece of data in the world that just makes me feel like I'm standing on Earth. I feel this sense of, like, brief relief. And when I saw the polling of Menendez today, I was like, right. Like, again, I don't know if he's guilty. I, I can't say if they're going to prove his case. But, like, yeah, it was the, the indictment was, you know, it looked really bad. And Democratic leadership has said, this guy's a problem. And the voters are like, yeah, I don't like this. And that, to me, was like, right. This is how it can work and does work in one portion of American politics. Yeah, this is the way it's supposed to work. I mean, in one party, you have people who want the norms of ethical behavior and the respect for the rule of law. And frankly, the sense that whether he did something legal or not, what's in that indictment makes him unattractive yes. to vote for yes, as a United right. States yes, senator. Yes, yes. I mean, yes, exactly. that's the essence here. That's the essence right. here. And on the other hand, you've got a guy indicted, as you say, 91 felony counts, and his party wants to bring him back to the Capitol and have him in charge of the only part of government they control. I mean, honestly, Chris, this is a break the glass moment because if there aren't enough Republicans that stand up and say, come on, folks, really? Are we really going to go down? If there's not, I mean, all those guys that won and women that won Biden districts, they're done. They are done. I mean, yeah, Hakeem well, Jeffries will be the new Speaker of the House in January of 2025. End of discussion. Talk about how to win 2024. Let Donald Trump back in the Capitol. Yes. I mean, I, I tend to agree with you, although, again, always hedge with the fact that the future is uncertain and lots of crazy stuff has happened uh, in the time that I've been uh, hosting this television show. But yes, I mean, that, that, my next question to you was, when you think about the vote on the motion to vacate, right? So all the Republicans are mad because it was eight, you know, it was eight votes, right? Tiny little sliver of the caucus. And I understand why they're mad. I mean, uh, you know, it, that, that's, a, it, that's annoying when, you know, eight of your colleagues basically blow this thing up. The question is, the math works the same way in reverse, right? It's like the speaker needs to get 217 or 218, depending on, I think, 217 because there's a few vacancies. You know, the, the, there's eight members in the House Republican caucus who should be able to say, no way, no, we're not voting for Donald Trump for speaker. Like, they've got the same power and the same leverage in this situation. It's just a question of whether they're too cowardly to exercise it if it comes to that. Yeah, I, I, I want to believe that this is just him looking for another moment uh, to be a nut. I, uh, um, right. And, and, and I, I think it probably is. But the fact that they think it's a good idea to tout it um, you know, independent voters are, I, I believe, by and large, the majority of them will be horrified at this idea. And, I agree. you know, I think everybody ought to remember back if Gates's deal was about the deficit, you know, they controlled government the first two years of Trump's presidential term. They controlled everything. They didn't do anything on deficit. No. And that was pre-COVID. They did nothing on the deficit. They did nothing no. to bring down spending. He believed in running up the debt. He didn't do anything to secure the southern border. They did oh. nothing on immigration reform. So as if this guy was a strong leader, that if he just had the levers of power, he could deliver on all the things the crazy caucus says they want, that would be one thing. But we know he can't. He didn't, even when they controlled all of government. So it is, um, and, and I mean, that's a normal analysis, not a crazy town analysis, but it would help these guys if they would look back and see what Trump actually did when he was president. Forget all the lying, just how bad he was at delivering on anything they believed in.